towards you. I decided to talk about a sort of classic phenomenon among the MBTI online communities, the INFJ door slam. Now, I've talked about it before uh, in another video a couple of years ago, uh, and it was just from my own ISTP perspective. This is going to be more of a general perspective, or what I feel is a much needed clarification or redefinition of what exactly the INFJ door slam is. Now, you might be wondering, why is an ISTP trying to act like an authority about an INFJ phenomenon? Or, you know, what is, what is my interest in all of this? Um, well, simply put, I see this topic come up every so often you know, in the typology forums, and the problem that I see happen is that uh, people seem to have different ideas of what the INFJ door slam is. Uh, so I see these arguments like, uh, I, like INFJs will be like, uh, well, that's not what I do, I do it this way, or other types do it too. Uh, and then you have like, well, door slamming is good, door slamming is bad. Uh, and so there's all these conflicting opinions. Uh, and really what's happening is they're all talking about different things and they don't even realize it. Um, and, you know, and see, that bothers me as an introverted thinking type because I'm trying to follow these discussions and analyze what people are saying and it's just all over the place with no logical flow whatsoever. Uh, and so, you know, it drives me nuts because it doesn't have to be that way. So, this is just my attempt at making some sort of sense out of it and trying to bring some consistency to the topic. Now, of course, these are all just my ideas and, you know, there's really no reason why anybody should take my ideas as some sort of established law or something. But uh, what I'm hoping is that, you know, maybe if a bunch of people were to agree that at least my ideas or what I'm saying here makes sense, then I think overall there'd be some better understanding uh, when discussing this stuff. I mean, it's really the best I can do because, I mean, the fact is that it's really a phenomenon that the internet made up. Uh, and so there's, there's really no definition of the INFJ door slam that any sort of MBTI authority has officially published. So, basically that means my opinion is just as valid as anybody else's. <laughs> so, what is the INFJ door slam? Okay, uh, the blog site personalitygrowth.com has an article about it and they define it as when the INFJ completely closes the door on someone, shutting them out of their lives for good. Now, that definition is problematic because it's really vague and yet the article goes on to give a really detailed explanation as to why the door slam happens. And see, that's where you start getting into trouble because they're trying to give a detailed explanation about such a broad category of actions. Um, you know, there could be a bazillion different reasons why an INFJ would choose to cut somebody out of their life. And there are lots of different ways they might go about doing it. You know, just because someone's an INFJ doesn't mean they're going to follow this exact formula with every person they decide to cut off. Um, and the forum discussions would seem to prove that because you got these INFJs disagreeing as to how it happens. So, to make more sense out of the INFJ door slam, I think we need to further narrow its definition. Um, you know, just saying that an INFJ has shut somebody out of their life forever, well, that is a basic requirement to be considered an INFJ door slam, but it's not enough. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that in order to be 
a true INFJ door slam, it has to meet the following requirements. First, an INFJ door slam has to be done by an INFJ. Now that may sound obvious, but I'm just going to make it part of the definition because otherwise other types will try to claim it. Now, an INFJ door slam is permanent. The INFJ has no intention of ever letting the person back into their life. Now, you could argue that maybe several years down the line that person is going to come back a totally changed person and then the INFJ can see that and decides to give the person another chance. Yeah, that happens, but I'm not going to worry about an edge case like that. I'm just going to focus on the, the moment of the door slam itself. Uh, and so, you know, basically, at the time of the door slam, the INFJ intends it to be permanent, and all signs indicate that it is. Now, an INFJ door slam results from an unacceptable situation that has built up over time. Now, that unacceptable situation could be anywhere from an abusive situation to, you know, maybe just an annoying person or a deadbeat. Um, the point is, it's something that's unacceptable to the INFJ. Now, so far, most people in the typology communities would probably agree with the uh, definition that I've established so far. But here's where it's going to start to get controversial. Now, in the period leading up to the INFJ door slam, the INFJ has let the unacceptable situation continue for much longer than most people would consider reasonable because the INFJ has spent that time hopelessly trying to fix it. Now, this is the reason why it's specific to INFJs because it's just part of the INFJ's nature with that combination of their introverted intuition, um, wanting to understand the other person and their extroverted feeling wanted to help that person. And uh, INFJs could explain this part a lot better than I can, so I'm just going to leave it at that. The INFJ door slam happens when the INFJ has reached an emotional breaking point. Uh, and at that point, the INFJ has decided that enough is enough. Uh, they've tried all they could do to fix the situation and then finally realized it's never going to work and they absolutely must cut the person off permanently. And then finally, the INFJ door slam includes a burst of anger or a temper tantrum that is either seen or unseen by the person being door slammed. Now this is the one that the INFJs will disagree with the most, especially the ones who have never done it this way before. But, okay, think about the door slam analogy. You're slamming a door out of anger and making a loud noise. That's why it's called a door slam. It's like this moment of rage where you're just slamming the door on someone and then you just walk out and then never look back. Now, in the actual situation, uh, this burst of anger can take on many forms. Uh, it can be done in person as like a, a direct confrontation, or it could be an angry email or text, or maybe having a friend deliver a message to the person, or maybe even something passive aggressive. Um, maybe the INFJ just kind of goes home and cries and yells into a pillow and cusses out the person uh, and then goes and blocks them on social media without actually saying anything to the person. The point is, anger is expressed in some way. So, if you're an INFJ and you're thinking, like, whoa, what? I've never done those things. Uh, or, you know, I've cut people off, but I don't do it like that. I do it a lot differently. Guess what? You're not a door slammer. And see, that's another really important point that I want to make here. Not all INFJs door slam. See, most of the online arguments happen because the INFJs are assuming that door slamming is just any situation in which they've cut somebody out of their life and you know in their, in their case it's usually for a good reason 
And so the INFJs will then feel the need to defend what they've done. And, you know, they, they say they were calm and mature about it. Uh, they don't regret anything about it. Okay, well, that's not a door slam. That's just removing a toxic person out of your life. That's healthy. Uh, in fact, um, Anne Dresden, an INFJ on YouTube, made a video a few months ago titled, Why INFJs Should Door Slam More. Excellent video, aside from the title. Um, she talked all about why INFJs shouldn't be afraid to remove unhealthy people from their lives, um, how you should recognize that it's not your job to fix them, uh, setting healthy boundaries, yada, yada, yada. Um, I highly recommend checking out that video if you're an INFJ and struggling with uh, unhealthy relationships. Uh, the only thing I disagreed with was just her use of the term door slam. Um, because uh, in her video, she wasn't talking about door slamming as I'm defining it here. Uh, she was just talking about removing toxic people from your life. And the way I see it, you do that so that you don't have to door slam them out of pure anger and frustration. So, removing toxic people from your life that's a healthy thing to do, but it's not door slamming unless the INFJ waits until their absolute breaking point to do that. Now, another thing that door slamming is not is it's not just a random burst of anger in the form of an out of control temper tantrum, uh, yelling at the person and being like, ah, you bleeping bleep bleep, I never want to see you again, and then storming out of the room and and then calming down a few days later and apologizing to the person and trying to continue on as if nothing happened. No, that's not a door slam. That's an anger control problem. Immature, unhealthy people do it. Doesn't matter what type you are. Uh, it has nothing to do with INFJ door slamming. So, door slamming. Is it a good thing to do? Well, based on the definition that I outlined at the beginning, no, it is not. Uh, mature INFJs will tell you, just like Anne Dresden did in her video, that it's not healthy for an INFJ to let an abuser get away with their bad behavior, uh, you know, like when you don't enforce any boundaries. Um, you know, you don't have to wait until you reach your breaking point and end up slamming the door on someone just out of anger and frustration. Because uh, when, when you do that, the door slam is just left totally confused because it seemed to come out of nowhere. Um, you know, and you know, even if you tried to talk to them multiple times about their unacceptable behavior, the fact that you stuck around all that time kind of lets it, it led them to believe that you weren't all that serious about it. Um, they're just going to do whatever they can get away with. And sometimes the door slammy isn't even a real abuser. Sometimes it's just someone who isn't capable or willing to meet the INFJ's needs. And so the INFJ, after spending so much time and energy trying to mold that person into somebody that they will never become, well, the INFJ will just suddenly run out of energy and then decide that uh, you know they're done and then they air the grievances and then split. And then the other person's all dumbfounded and, and then soon becomes pretty pissed at the way the INFJ handled it, and rightfully so. But that's what the INFJ door slam is. Uh, it's something that immature INFJs do. But now the good thing is, I suspect that most INFJs who do this only do it once um, because they realize how badly they handled it. and. INFJs are generally good at self-reflection and learning from their mistakes. And then a lot of INFJs never have to go through this to, to learn not to do it um, because they realize through healthier forms of growing and maturing that it's good to set boundaries and it's okay to calmly sever ties with an unhealthy person before it escalates into a messed up toxic relationship. So anyway, that's my definition of the INFJ door slam. 
I doubt most of you will actually start using it in your discussions from now on. But if you did, that would be great. Sort of classic phenomenon among the Hey! This is gonna be more of a general before it escalates into a mix oh, a mix a mess a mix a, a mixed up a Mexican relationship. <laughs> South of the border door slam border slamming. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs>